Where was I when I found out about the blue screen of death that was making its way around the world, shutting a whole bunch of stuff down? So it was five in the morning uh, when I first started getting telephone calls and you know texts and emails and that kind of stuff. So I kind of immediately made my way to my home office so I could get spun up to start digging into it. What were the key observations that I quickly detected? There was some very organic collaboration happening within minutes. So within minutes, I was collaborating with threat research teams to try to understand what was happening here. One thing I want to make very clear, anyone that knows anything about software knows software being made by humans, which is the only way to make software nowadays, will always have the risk of an issue, a bug. Something gets injected incorrectly into the code. That's the facts of life. So we very quickly assessed that it did not appear to be an attack, because that's the first thing we wanted to figure out. Was this an attack or was this a bug? Quickly found that it was a bug. There was no nefarious code within the file, so it really looked like a bug, like a mistake, like human error. Another very, very key observation that quickly came on my radar was Companies were now in the press being reported as XYZ's flights are grounded. Um, this company's flights were not grounded. Cyber threat actors are keeping that research and they now know valuable intel about the type of platform you use, the type of security you use, and they can now start creating targeted attacks. So what do I see? I see an imminent uptick in targeted attacks against those companies whose names were well, well, well documented. Another key takeaway I found, the complexity of the fix. So once we were able to zoom in and identify that, you know, it was a bug, we started investigating how to fix this. The vendor involved did a phenomenal job of tracking this down themselves and they released fixes for how to, you know, how to mitigate this issue. The problem with the fixes were, in this day and age, where many consumers and many cybersecurity leaders even might not be aware of how dispersed their infrastructure is, a lot of the computers that needed hands-on keyboards to fix this problem are in extremely remote locations. That makes the fixing of this problem even more challenging. One of the biggest takeaways from a positive perspective that I can see here is every time this has happened in the past, the cybersecurity industry as a whole has learned, we've adapted, and we've come up with improved processes and methodologies to defend your infrastructure. I expect the same thing from this. So with the negative, there always comes some positive. Everyday people are absolutely stunned by the interconnectedness of our technology. You might not have had this issue in and of yourself, but one of your key suppliers might have gone down and that breaks your entire process. Now is the time to revamp, As, is my process good? Does it need correction? Are there blind spots in it? And what does my process discipline look like? Another recommendation that I'm making to CIOs and CISOs, is now a possible time for you to start reconsidering multi-vendor approach? I'm not suggesting a dual endpoint approach on each endpoint, so dual protection. What I am suggesting is maybe you carve your environment up and some endpoints are using one type of protection, the others are using the other. So if and when there is an issue, at least your entire environment hasn't gone down. Now is also a time for you to reassess AI responsibility and how you are protecting and defending and integrating your AI landscape and your AI tech stack. Why do I bring that up now, even though this is not an AI issue? I bring that up now because I'm strongly suggesting that AI is probably the next place this is gonna happen. There's a rush right now to um, use AI in your environment. So you're probably um, ingesting SaaS tools already that leverage AI. Is the ingestion of those SaaS tools and the usage of them by your employees, is that covered by your process and your process discipline? Is there um, risk that's been introduced in terms of data leakage? Can we lose data because someone has copied and pasted some um, personal identifiable data into a, a, a large language model that they shouldn't be? These are the things we need to reconsider now. If not, we will face another major issue in terms of the tech stack and how we're gonna do this. The probably biggest thing that I find that we really need to consider leaning into more is an advanced management style. 
So how do we veer away from buying products to fix, you know, whatever security needs we have to leaning more into, hey, I am no longer going to just buy a product. I am going to buy a managed service so that that managed service has the time and the due diligence to be able to put in place process and ensure process discipline, giving you, the corporation, focus on what it is that you do, the, wherever you drive your profit. That's one of the biggest places I see an opportunity for improvement across the industry so that we can recover from these types of issues if and when they do happen again in the future significantly faster. We need tech experts that we can depend on that are proficient in cybersecurity for doing cybersecurity in your environments. Simplicity is desired, but don't shy away from the complexity that is required to effectively defend environments. Our environments are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and more and more and more interconnected and interrelated, that means there is some complexity that is inherent that you're not gonna be able to avoid. A managed service helps solve that problem. Last thing, if you need assistance in solving any of the long tail problems that we see occurring from this issue, let's get together and collaborate effectively to make our entire world safer from a digital perspective. Thank you.